Hey, what's up? I'm Joel Madden, and this is Artist Friendly. On this episode, I'll be talking to the lead singer and frontman of two-time Grammy-nominated, multi-platinum selling band, Papa Roach. Let's go. That's my kind. I don't want no bad times. I don't want to have bad. One of my favorite things that you do, you probably don't even know like how many people you probably help with this thing that you do. Oh, what is it? But on Instagram, you make these lists of things you're grateful for. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone's told you that. I'm sur sure some people have. You probably get DMs and stuff like that. But I read those all the time. And I've found it, I've found like this simple thing that you may be doing for yourself Yeah, is like actually become this like, I've probably read however many times you've done it. I've probably, read, I don't know if it's 50 times or 30 times. That's sick, right on. I've probably read 80% of them, That's you know? Right um, I like to think I've probably read every single one of them. But you might have. I think gratitude is like one of the key ingredients for happiness. Oh, yeah. It's a like that's factual. I you know, I've been doing a gratitude list for some years now. Um, some sober friends of mine back in the day had suggested that I become part of this gratitude list, and so I did that. And it was an email chain going on, going around for some years, and it's just been part of that habit for me. You know, part of that recovery life, and uh, it is like you said, man. It's it is medicine straight up, and. You know, social media can be like, it can be like doom and gloom sometimes, you know? And I just, at one point I was, I saw my friend Clint, a guitar player for Seven Dust. He was yeah. doing a gratitude list um, and he was posting it in his stories. And I was like, you know what, man, I'm just going to take my gratitude public. I'm just going to do it because I've been doing it for years. You know, I was kind of struggling with social media and how I would engage with social media. Yeah, like just, what's your version? Yeah, who am I on, on this platform, yeah, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. And, you know, one thing that I've found is like, uh, gratitude is it's it's the medicine and I see a lot of people out there struggling and I was like you know I'm just gonna share this stuff and maybe maybe inspire somebody else to jump on some gratitude and maybe maybe that's what it is and so just bringing something positive to the feed right and uh I have gotten a lot of really positive feedback from it you know from people and stuff like and I know it's not like clickbait worthy you know it's like and sometimes I like I'm in my head I'm like oh man like I'm not going to go back and see how many people like this. Like just yeah. be disciplined about this thing and not let it be ego based. Let it be selfless and honest and authentic. And it that's, feels that way, dude. Yeah, it is. And I just get real with it, man. I just, I throw the real out there. When I started reading that, it was the first time I felt like I really like, I mean, we've, we've known each other over the years for sure. Like no, no doubt we've spent time together, but I actually felt like I knew you. Oh yeah. It's a deeper look inside. Yeah. You know, I, I really am like, and especially too, I, I share a lot about my family on there. Yeah. You know, it's like high on gratitude, right? It's like, of course, I'm be grateful for my family, my wife, my kids, this lovely family we got. And there's lots to be celebrated within that life, you know, and just the successes of, of my children, the failures of my children, the failures of myself, the successes of myself, you yeah. know, and really just kind of like digging in and, and re focusing uh, my mindset because I have a tendency to uh, wake up with what I call fear of impending doom. Yeah. It's like, it's such a great way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like sometimes I'm like, and I had to force myself because I was for a while, just like first thing I would wake up and I would pick up my phone. Right. And I would just start scrolling and just be in that world. And I'm like, nah, this is, this is not working out for me. And so it's part of my, you know, get up, get real routine in my life. And, you know, I don't always uh, hit the mark on this thing, but it's like, I'm, I'm willing to give it a go. I got to throw down. I haven't done a gratitude list in probably about a week and a half, man. It's time to do another one, dude. I'm like, sometimes I'll do them like every day. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll go a week without it. And then I'm like, all right, now my attitude is starting to get a little stanky. You forget you sometimes. Know? Oh, yeah. You forget where the medicine is. How, how soon we forget. Yeah. You know? Isn't like, it crazy how quick we can forget? to do something that makes us feel so good when it comes to fear-based oh, anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that like, we all probably suffer from, especially artists, we, we all probably suffer from very similar like afflictions. Oh yeah. So we're not that different. Yeah. Like our stories, if you line them all up, are mm -hmm. s probably similar stories, right? So it's, that's interesting to me because it's like, when you think about especially bands and rock bands and the era of music that we all come from it tended to be 
emotional. There was a lot yep. of anger. There was a, we were working a lot of shit out. Yep. That we didn't even know. Absolutely. So we're, we all tend to be like afflicted with the same thing, even though we feel a lot of times like we're alone in it. Mm-hmm. And we're not, because yep. if we walk in the room with all these people, if we all actually just shared, yeah. everyone would be like, yo, I feel, I, I wake up with that same feeling every day. Impending doom. You know it, you know um, it. And then our anxiety will attach it to any given thing, any yep. given week. Yeah. So this week, my I'm anxious and, and I'm, I'm stressed about this. I won't even remember what I was anxious or stressed about in a year mm-hmm. today, right? Like, like whatever I'm stressed about today, a year from now, I'm not even going to remember. I'm, I'm, I couldn't even try to remember. Yep. That's what I always try to remind myself. But that wait, the waking up in the morning, I don't know why the mornings, and maybe it's like, maybe it was when I was a kid, the mornings weren't great. But like the morning is the time to do the things that make you feel good. Oh, yeah. Because it tends to be. Kicks off the day, man. Yeah. Kicks off the day good. Dude. Have that's a good. You want. you want a good day, dude. That's, yeah. That's what I'm going for, you know? I feel you on that though, man. When you're talking about the the similar affliction or whatnot and the struggle that people deal with and what they walk through, it's real, man. And and everybody has their own version of 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 their baggage and what they're dealing with. Um, but it's important for me to use the tools that I've been given as an adult, right? To like do yes. this adulting thing and really like change my perspective. And since I've been able to do that, man, it's like I've really had a, there's been an upswing just in my existence, um, my connection with people, my ability to look at my, you know, to look at myself in the mirror and be cool with the person looking back at me, you know, cause there's, there's been some years where that, that wasn't the case, you know? And yeah. so it's good to be good sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not always a wreck. And that's like, I'm just so grateful for that, you know? And it's actually, I think it makes a lot of sense to me to hear it from you because if you look at your success in the world, you could almost track. <laughs> is there a point? At what point do you feel like you figured that out? Because I could see Papa Roach's success. You guys are, are having the last few years and this year, last year, the last few years you guys have had. I wouldn't even say it's like this wave of the bands and the thing that's that everyone says, all this, all these bands have come back. You guys never have never stopped working yeah. your asses off yeah we've been working we've been working hard man but you could argue yeah. that papa roach is bigger today than you've ever been and that it's this culture you've built touring and, and all the things you do but can you see alignment with that success with your personal growth and your personal success oh yeah absolutely man i think you know when we first came in it was like nothing could stop us you know we yeah. were just getting after it it's yeah, like young you guys. remember that era yeah. dude it was just like let's go man the era of the big record deal life is great you know put out the record go do it we sold millions it's funny i was cleaning out stuff from the closet the other day and i found i have the this might be the world's smallest triple platinum plaque. It's literally like this big. Yeah. It's three CDs. It's all bink, bink, bink. It's all yeah. infest, three million. You know, but then uh in the process of going and becoming successful, I just got I got loose and reckless, man. I got I got really into drinking and partying, and that was just it ruled my life. And, you know, I think my career and my life reflected that. Obviously, you know, it's like the success of the second album wasn't so big and the genres were changing and you know, the stripes and the vines were coming in. It's kind of that era. Yeah, well, yeah. you you could say it wasn't as big as that first sh- shot out of the cannon. Oh, yeah. But that's a, actually if we stopped and we said all things being like nature. Yeah. That's actually a natural. Yeah. It, like, we don't know it at the time. We're like, why didn't the second album? Yeah. The first album. I know. And, and ah. it's almost like we didn't have like a sound mind sometimes mm-hmm. sitting with us going, no, this is actually a process. Yeah. Like, it's going to do this and then this and then this if we stay on track yeah but you work hard yep you, you you play hard yep and then you live harder yep in those moments of like how do i make sense of this and how do i deal with this all this For, first of all i'm just trying to wrap my head around being someone in the world when i wasn't a year ago yeah <laughs> and then i'm also trying yeah. to wrap my head around what it means to like be able to like live a life that feels like i'm at disneyland so I feel like I hit the lottery. Yep. We know now we didn't hit the lottery. We worked our asses off. Absolutely. Yeah, but, true, true, true. But it wasn't like some luck. We can say, oh, I feel lucky. Yeah. And we can feel lucky to our fans and all that. But like we worked really hard and we got to give some credit to that. 
and own it a little bit so that we can feel respectable and yeah. not like we're just some lottery winner. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because your music's good. I mean, okay, here's a question. Yeah. So before you drop your first record, right? Yeah. How many? How long were you guys a band before you dropped your first record? R first the record. first major label record. Yeah. So the first the first thing we did was like a um was like an indie EP. Yep. Like two years after we started, we started in '96. Okay. Our first record came out in 2000. Yeah. So you guys put the work. It's sweat equity. Yeah. You guys put those years of work in, and then it you but, got that shot. But I remember, and that, and if I had like being a grown up. And, and if I had like a kid my age doing the same thing, I would give some information to them. Cause I remember feeling like from 96 to 2000, it all felt like a lottery. Yeah. Like, oh, when are we going to get yeah, our who's break? Up next? Yeah. Our big break. Yep. And big breaks happen if we're describing opportunity that comes to us by going forward and meeting it on the road. Mm -hmm. That could be described as a big break. Yeah. But we had to go down the road and do the work to get to that opportunity. So we have to like, we have to find the middle ground of saying, I feel lucky, but I also am going to own that I work hard and right. that I'm valuable. My ideas are valuable. So that's the thing I had to learn how to do was go, I'm not just a dumb kid. That's how mm -hmm. I felt. Yep. And that was the work I had to do after making sense of the success of it, where I did for a long time, just think, thought I felt like, oh, I just hit the lottery. Right. No, I better not let this go. Right. So I better hold on to this thing. And, and that's not a good way to live. Mm -hmm. You got to kind of like, design the house you want to live in yep so you have to stop sometimes and go is this the right move mm -hmm. how do we feel about this but if you're just afraid of losing something you'll say yes to everything yeah and you'll just run 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 you won't enjoy anything because mm -hmm. it, it's fleeting yep i think there's like a middle ground where we have to where reality and and imagination and the surreal world we live in as artists meet yeah and we kind of get rooted in like some reality mm -hmm. so in 2000 when the record came out it did feel like magic it did feel like because we were broke uh -huh. too for so long and then and you then suddenly you have paid. some money <laughs> yeah. and you're like i can literally go to the atm and get money and i can go out to mm -hmm. eat and i can do things that i never could do so and i was working two jobs at all times yep. and just trying to like make it all work and then through my 20s it was the same thing i feel like you probably had the same experience i worked hard i played hard i was always in fear of losing it and then i started and and i did have my moments where i was living harder and medicating mm -hmm. all this confusion like i was it's like you got shot out of a cannon with no parachute and you're just going through the air trying to like yeah grab. And you're looking at your friends flying next yeah. to you like fuck dude we're gonna <laughs> what be all right do? dude shit man this is kind of fun yeah. but what do we do <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel you dude yeah. it's, it's a terrifying ride man it, it it really was in the beginning uh, fun right of course. but i, I of course. totally get what you're saying where it's like that we have this wild dreamer in us this like unrealistic like outside the box dreamer but then there's this realist that worked the day job and that balance between the two and then having this opportunity to become successful and then became successful. And then where's your toolkit after that? It's like, all right, I'm going to build my wings on the way down, I guess. Here we go. Let's build you it. Know? Yeah, man. It, we didn't have anybody around us, man. We, we were, uh, you know, we watched some of our friends, you know, come up and then become even more successful in their, you know, their trajectory was this. And I'm like, oh, well, why did our second record have to flop? You know, and I'm like, dude, we sold almost a million records and it was considered a flop. You know, it's kind of like- And it was a cool record. Yeah, thank you, thank you, man. Which maybe- Appreciate all, it. And which, like, you never know the value of things until later. Yeah. So like, would you go back and change that second record? I don't know if I would. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Like, would you go back and change that second record? Because to me, it's part of the Papa Roach legacy. And where you are today, I think is like, how many bands can say that they're standing where you guys are today? Was there something in that record that caused you to be who you are today? And if you could, would you go back and change it? Would you make, if you could wave a wand and say, I want, I'm going to make my second record bigger than my first. Do you, would, like, is there a chance if you did that, that you wouldn't have the life you have today? Yeah, right. Yeah, you can't, you can't go back and change those things, man. I, I, I hear you on that. I like, I don't know, man. It's like, I look back at that period in time and it's just really when like my alcoholism took fully a hold of me. Right. And it was just like, I was just lost and didn't even know it. And mm. so it wasn't like I was phoning shit in, you know what I mean? Uh, I was never doing that. It was like, that. 
I would always get on stage, throw down and do the deal. But it was just like, it just kind of felt like I was floundering a little bit like that. And honestly, can't go back and change the record. Nah, wouldn't do it. No, but maybe some of the the lifestyle choices I was choosing at the time. Sure. But, you know, I had to, I had to take the lumps that I had to take to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, 